What's going on guys? So, uh, this is gonna be my first brisket video in a while and we're gonna do it on the Acorn Ceramic Grill. Uh, what I've got here is a 10 and a half pound packer brisket. What the packer means is uh, that they didn't trim it at all. It's just, just a straight cut off the cow and uh, it's up to me to trim it if I want to. So, and I am gonna trim this brisket and we're gonna flip it over here. And I wanna cut off a lot of this fat here. Um, and I want to just kind of trim off any like little pieces here and there. I've got a, the perfect knife for it right here. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We don't want too much fat on here. You do want to keep the top cap for sure. That way you'll have, it'll help keep the moisture in your brisket. But I'm going to just toss the fat in the sink. Just want to reduce the thickness of this fat. All right, that's pretty good. And get a little bit more here. All right, now I can work on additional bits here. I'm gonna lay this brisket as flat as I can on here. Okay. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. So now I want to flip it over. Let me get this piece. I'm going to flip it over and just kind of check this fat cap. Ideally, you would like to have uh, a quarter inch fat cap on this. This is actually, uh, in some spots it looks like I could thin it down a little bit here, um, but it's pretty thin through the rest, so I may thin it out just a little bit over here and over here as well.
Alright, that's about all I want to do to this um, trimming wise. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some X's just in the top here. Okay, so I've cut the X's in the top of the brisket and I did get a little cut a little bit into the meat here. Not a big deal. This is actually the point. Um, so this usually gets chopped up anyways for brisket sandwiches or whatever. And this is the flat, which we usually like to do in slices. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put our rub together here. I've got a half a cup of paprika, a quarter cup of light brown sugar, three tablespoons of kosher salt, three tablespoons of black pepper, coarse black pepper, and three tablespoons of chili powder, just to add a little heat. So we're gonna go ahead and mix them in my little shaker that I have here. You can use any shaker really. I just happen to use this one all the time. I bought it just for that purpose. So let's see if I can get it into my shaker here. I'll make the mess. Let's get the paprika in there. Our salt, coarse pepper, and our chili powder. And it fills up my shaker quite a bit. I did spill a little, whatever. So I'm gonna kind of just work this in a little bit. And what I really like to do is I like to put the lid on, put my hand over it. Basically I'm giving it a just a good shake to kind of mix it up. And it did a little bit, I'm gonna stir it a little more. And there you have it. I rub the shake all over the brisket. All right, so let's go ahead and get the rub on. What I like to do is the bottom side first. You probably won't use all your rub, not a big deal. You can always save it for later, what you don't use. You can kind of pat it in with your hand as well. Just kind of pat the rub in. All right, let's flip it over. This is the fat side. I usually like to cook this fat side up. As the fat melts, it'll render through the meat and kind of keep your meat moist. And just pat it in. Now I am gonna flip this over one more time. I like to put a heavy rub on my briskets. Um, some people will argue they don't like a heavy rub on their briskets. Um, I think it helps contribute to the bark more. So I like to put it on pretty thick. Then you have people fighting over who gets the burnt ends. Oh man, looks so good already, guys. So there we have it. A nice rubbed brisket. Now what I want to do with this brisket, so I'm gonna saran wrap it, put it in the fridge, let it sit for at least 12 hours, and then this thing's gonna hit the pit probably about 3 a.m. And the reason why is 
This is gonna turn, this, this rub that we put on is gonna turn into more of a paste. I like to keep a little bit of this left and I sprinkle it on more right before I put it on the pit and it'll kind of just add a little more texture to it. But uh, we're gonna let the flavor kind of set in in the fridge for uh, about 12 hours. Uh, what I was saying, um, the reason why um, it has to go on at 3 a.m. is this is probably gonna be about a 15 hour cook. You gotta say, the rule of thumb is for a brisket, you wanna do an hour and a half per pound. No brisket's the same though. You may not even go that long. You may go longer. You may go shorter. Uh, you really just wanna give yourself a lot of time. Worst case scenario, the brisket finishes early. You wrap it in foil or keep it in your butcher wrap. Wrap it in a towel, put it in a cooler, or wrap it in a towel and just set it in your oven and just leave your oven off. And it will hold that temp and it'll continue to cook and uh, it'll hold for a while while you're waiting for company. But you, you would rather finish early than finish late and have people waiting, right? So anyways, we're done with this part. Let's go outside and we'll get the uh, acorn ceramic going. All right guys, basically these grates are still clean because I have not used it yet to barbecue on. So they're all nice and purdy and clean. But we're gonna set this up for a uh, brisket smoke. <clears throat> I have a little foil pan that I bought. I was testing this earlier to see how this foil pan would fit. And it fit. I just had to crinkle it some, but hey, it's just to catch my drippings and fat. And I'm gonna fill it with a little bit of some apple juice and water, just for steam. I'm gonna pop the smoking stone out. Same old smoking stone you use with the acorn. You use it on this as well. So basically, I've got some uh, coals left in here. I was curing it. Uh, this is an oak based uh, coal that I have in here. It's a lump charcoal. We're gonna put some wood chunks here in the center. We're gonna put some uh, hickory and mesquite in here. We're gonna have a little mixed bag of smoke. <coughs> So I've got my <clears throat> I've got my H E B smoking chunks. We're gonna go ahead and pop this bag open. It's brand new. All right, we're gonna literally gonna place one like that. Place one here. <clears throat> place one there. I used to like you know have like you know four or five in the middle here. And that's hickory. Now I got some mesquite chunks here. I'm going to kind of scatter them just out here on the outer part. Like so. And for our base charcoal, we're using a oak lump charcoal. I'm going to kind of scatter it on top. This is a, uh, I'm using the B&B uh, &B brand this time, just cause they, it was the only oak I could find. So I'm using B&B. &B. <clears throat> Let's scatter these coals around a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna make a few little pockets here cause I want a little more wood in here. We'll put some smaller pieces up on top here, like this is mesquite. And I've done this with the old acorn, the uh, metal acorn. Um, Basically, I uh, just had the, all the coal and everything just right up under. This is hickory I'm putting in now. And you just have it right up underneath the smoking stone. The smoking stone will kind of sit on top of all this. But don't worry about it snuffing out, because it won't. And you just kind of scatter them about. This is all hickory here, these pieces. 
And I want to make sure that that stone still sits kind of flush on here. And as this burns down, the stone will settle on even more. So those are my smoking chunks. And also what I like to do, I'm just showing you this right now because I'm going to put the brisk on at 3 a.m. So it's probably going to be harder to see what I'm doing out here. I'll probably bring a spotlight out for this. But around 3 a.m., we will get the fire going. And because uh, I'm really hoping that this... Uh, is done by like five in the evening. It might go a little longer, I don't know. But the brisket is, you know, it's 10 and a half pounds. So, you know, one and a half hours per pound, that puts it right about 15 hour smoke. But um, <clears throat> let's see how the stone fits. Yep, stone, like I said, the stone will sit on top. That's okay, it sits on top a little bit. Not too worried about that. <clears throat> Drip pan will go next. Kind of wedge it down in here. It's the beauty of foil. You can flex it, stretch it, bend it, whatever you gotta do. <clears throat> and then we'll put our grapes on top of the pan. Just like so. Now one thing I am gonna do with this smoke that I haven't done in the others is I'm actually gonna wrap this brisket in uh, butcher paper. I've got some pink pecan i think it's pe or peach i think it's peach based uh butcher paper i'm going to wrap it in it's just pure peach paper but this is my setup and i'll have a uh, monitor going to monitor the temp at the grate level and i'll have a probe in the meat because when the meat gets to be about 165 i'm going to uh wrap the brisket and then put it back on and when you they call it the texas crutch kind of helps you get past the stall when you hit about 160 you usually have a stall on your meat a stall isn't typical in these ceramics. You really don't get a stall too much, but I want to wrap it. Uh, I want to see how it does. I just want to see. But anyways, that's that. When we get to starting this up, I'll just take the smoking stone off, light it up, put everything back in place, and film my pan, and we're, we'll wait till it's 225. So I just want to show you all this while I had some good daylight. And uh, we'll get back here in a bit. All right, guys, it's about 2 a.m., a little after 2 a.m., actually. I'll go ahead and get my charcoal charcoal starter going. Open up my vents all the way here. And let this, uh, get this charcoal lit up in here. I've had this fire up charcoal starter for a little while. Works pretty well. Um, I also have the uh, started a charger over to me, but I can't find a lighter, so I'm gonna have to save uh, demonstrating that for another cook. But I need to get this going, and I can't find my uh, lighter or a lighter. that's that let's go ahead and put our smoking stone in place get a water pan in there Take this, take this one grate off for a second. We're gonna add our apple juice for the drip pan. some water as well. I'm 
right about there. All right, guys, I got my Weber eye device grill here. We're gonna use this for my monitoring of my great temps. So I'm just gonna set, find a place in here for my great sen uh, sensor. Say right about, right about there would be good. All right. Right now, probe one is reading the ambient temperature probe. That is is reading 77. So we need to let this get up to about 225. We'll close this and uh, we'll monitor this setting, not the dome temp. These thermometers are never really that accurate as far as like, they're accurate, but they're not accurate in the sense of how hot it is at the grate. It's telling you how hot it is up here. So I like my probe to be down here. I, would, I hope one day that grill manufacturers find a way to run their probe lower, closer to the grate, and then this will be way more accurate as far as smoking goes. So anyways, um, we're gonna wait for this to get to about 225 and hold a steady 225. And I'll be dialing the vents down and everything as we go here. Um, and I'll explain vent settings more um, as I get used to this grill. But it's very similar to the uh, Acorn, the original Acorn for sure. Um, I think you're gonna find your low and slow, slow. You're gonna find your low and slow settings are more um, around the one and a half mark on the top and the bottom, like before. So I got that closed off, and we'll get back when we put the brisket on. As I've uh, dialed this top vent down to about three. Um, because we're getting closer to our temp and I want to make sure I don't blow past my um, Smoking temp that I want about 225 or at 173. I always start kind of dialing the vents down when I'm about 50 degrees away Down here I got a nice glow in the cha uh, Ash chamber here because the coals are nice and hot in the bottom there Um and so I've got it set to about two right now. And I'm just kind of monitoring to see how this goes. So, yeah, I just wanted to explain the vents here. Um, you'll see on here, we're already reading 200 on my thermo probe. I'm reading 178. So I'm going to be monitoring these and kind of start playing with these vents um, to dial these vents down. So that's what we're doing right now. And as soon as we get around to 225. We'll put the meat on. All right, I know I said I was gonna come back when we uh, get to put the meat on, but I wanted to kind of show you guys. Um, see here, we're at 250 dome temp. Great temp, 211. Now I've been dialing down, I don't know if you can see, so I'm gonna use my phone flashlight to show you because this is a dark, there's dark markings on here. But you can see, blow some of the smoke away. Um, you can see I'm at about the two mark and I've been kind of watching this and it's slowly creeping up now Which means that once I'm About 220 or so down here. I've got it at the two um, And once I get to about 220 or so I'll dial it to like the one and a half and same up here I'll be dialing it down some more But the smoke is lightening some which is what we want. We don't want a real heavy smoke. We want a light smoke and I'm monitoring it from my phone too so you can see they're lined up so that's pretty awesome but anyways we will definitely next shot put the meat on all right guys we're at 229 which is okay we overshot a little bit not too big of a deal I'm gonna get the brisket on here pretty quick Just like so and uh, you'll see the temp drop on my therm thermo probe which is fine I just want to make sure this brisket is over my drip pan good 
So basically now, you're gonna see the temp drop quite a bit because the brisket's cold, or colder, I should say, than my grill. So <clears throat> we're gonna close this real quick. And now we gotta let the temp build back up. So there it is. We'll get back to this here in a little bit. Right now, the vents are set at one on top and one on bottom. So we'll kind of monitor this and then we'll get a better idea of where the optimum setting is on the vents on this low and slow process. Brisket's been cooking for about five hours or so almost. Um, we're gonna pull it because I just checked my temperature of the meat because I put a, I put a meat probe in and we're at 168 on that. And to show you, I had refilled my pan too with some water just kind of help keep it steamed. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the probe out. I'm gonna pull the brisket off of here wrap it in butcher paper and put it back and we're going to let it stay in the butcher paper the rest of the cook. Uh, this is just something I'm trying. Uh, some people swear by it. They like to wrap their briskets in paper or wrap in foil. I heard wrapping in foil makes it too tender. Uh, wrapping in paper still allows a nice bark form. So we're going to do that and um, you can see this actually got a little warmer than I like. Uh, the grill did. I think it got up to like 300 for a little bit. But no big deal. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. But the airflow control on this grill is fantastic. I just cranked it open too much earlier and it got a little bit out of hand. But let's get this off and we'll wrap it inside. We got our brisket wrapped in our butcher paper. We're gonna set it back on the grill. Just like so. And I'm gonna take the meat probe and I'm gonna stick it right through the paper. Just like that. And I can monitor my meat temp as well. Now we're going to let this get up to 195 degrees and then we'll take it off the grill, wrap it, and put it in a cooler for an hour. To, or, I'll, yeah, I'll put it in a cooler for an hour and let it uh, continue to cook itself. It should be a real tender brisket, hopefully. Alright guys, while the brisket continues to cook right here behind me, I um, want to talk about a few things I've already noticed with this uh, ceramic. It has an incredible airflow control on it compared to the steel acorn. Um, it's actually even better than the pit boss that I've noticed. The air controls are just really good on it. No leaks on this grill at all. No leaks around the gasket where the hinges, where the two halves come together. Um, and what happened with this is uh, I put this brisket on at 3 a.m. Yeah, 3 a.m. and I had it set. I had it dialed down. I had it about 225. Threw the brisket on. Of course, the brisket brought the temperature of the grill down. Um, the grill temp did get back up to 225 uh, within about half an hour or so. And then I dialed my uh, started dialing my vents down a little more to just under the one to try to keep it around there. Worked good. <clears throat> 
But then the temperature started to dive down closer to 200. So then I came out, opened the vents back up, got it back up to about 225. Um, and I found out that the happy mark on this grill settings wise is between the one and one and a half mark um, on the top and bottom vents once you get things locked in. And you're gonna have some fluctuation uh, depending on if a chunk of wood catches on fire in there or whatever, you'll get a little spike, but not much. Uh, what happened with me is I was noticing it kind of teetering down and I went and I set it to two and I do have an alarm on my, <laughs> on my, um, remote thermometer. And of course it did go off, but I passed out. I was tired. I passed out, probably woke up about two hours later and my girl had gotten up to about 300. It's not a big deal. A lot of people do try to expedite their brisket uh, cooks with getting in the 275 to 300 range. I don't like to do that. Uh, I like to keep mine around the 225 and just let it go. I've got the grill back down around 225, 230, which is where I want it. And uh, we've wrapped it in butcher paper. And it's, it's just going through the uh, slower part of getting up to 195. So this, this brisket may be done about noon today. I'm thinking it might be a uh, nine or ten hour smoke. So hey, whatever, right? I'll just uh, wrap it and put it in the uh, cooler for a little bit, and then we will slice this bad boy up. So once it's ready to be pulled, we'll pull it. Uh, I'll wrap it and then we'll slice it. All right, guys. Here's the brisket. Um, now I did do a wrap, and you notice it didn't bark up as much on top having it wrapped but anyways it did bark up on the sides quite a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and give it some slices here oh yeah real easy to cut through Not much of a smoke green, but on the ceramics, it's actually, well, I lied. There is a bit of a smoke green. Um, not a heavy one, but on these Kamados, uh, the secret to getting a good smoke green is to actually, um, actually put the brisket on refrigerator cold. That way it stays in that 140 degree range longer and uh, that's where the chemical reaction usually occurs is around 140 degree mark it has to stay that way for so long but yeah this brisket turned out nice and i'm using a non-serrated blade somebody's giving me some trouble over that i'm just using a regular plain blade knife this time so but yeah, it cuts up nice. But yeah, I'm gonna try a piece here. Yeah, buddy. Let's see if we can get it to focus. There's our brisket. The pull test pulls like nothing. <laughs> That's really good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The bark looks perfect. Got a real good bark on it. Um, but yeah, I um, just wanted to demonstrate doing a brisket on the new acorn ceramic. It can be done. <laughs> it's really good, guys. Um, the ceramic did well. Even when it ramped up on me that one time, my fault. I was able to keep it back down around 225, 230. That's good. Anyways, thank y'all for watching. Um, hope this kind of helps you see what you can get out of the ceramic acorn. I'm gonna dig into this and have some dinner. Cheers.